going on, Jerome? It's a beautiful Monday. Birds are chirping and stuff, and it's time for another Vikings news dump. So the Vikings had their bye week, and it's kind of nice. So watch game stress free on Sunday. Maybe get a little bit, a little nap. Sweat your fantasy teams. It's all good. But uh, the Vikings kind of felt like they were an afterthought. Right, so the Vikings weren't getting their flowers, and you know, announcers talking about the teams that beat in the NFC kind of kind of brushed the Vikings aside. It happens, uh, but right now the cat's ass (pun intended) is the the low energy Detroit Lions went into Dallas, put the bank thing on the Cowboys, forty-seven to nine, and it's just whatever, whatever, right? So the Lions obviously pissed off about last season. Dan Skipper did not report, and I feel like the Lions tried to play like too cute with their stupid games it's like oh uh i'm not reporting i'm reporting now i'm reporting trying to get their offensive tackles a score it's all right it's all right cannot wait until they're humbled next week by brian flores and company because they certainly weren't uh humbled by zimmer's defense on sunday now yeah zimmer's defense dealing with a myriad of injuries kendrick's lawrence parsons like it's understandable right but this is embarrassing this is embarrassing so the lions uh, put up almost 500 yards of offense, 47 points, all that, just ridiculous. Just uh, three out of five in the red zone. It, it was rough. It was no good. Now, I, I, I've i said before, I, I think that Mike McCarthy is going to get fired in season and Zimmer would be interim, but I don't know anymore. I don't know. But uh, some unfortunate for the Lions is uh, superstar edge rusher Aiden Hutchinson had a pretty gruesome uh, looking a- uh, leg injury and – of course, you never want to see that. So your prayers up to Hutchinson and his family. Uh, hopefully, he'll be able to resume his career and be you know the the Pro Bowl All Pro caliber player that he is. Man, but uh, ESPN breaking Aiden Hutchinson has a broken tibia. Lions head coach Dan Campbell announced he underwent immediate surgery at a Dallas area hospital per Adam Schefter. So yeah, ending of the season, uh, it's gonna be you know road to recovery, but. You know, wishing him the best, right? But obviously that will impact you know things on Sunday. But as far as the Vikings Lions odds, so it opened at well some places it opened as the Vikings plus three, you know, before the season. But that doesn't really matter. Who's going to bet a week seven game before the season? Now, yeah. uh, but right now things seem to be holding steady at Vikings favored by one and a half. Now, the old rule of thumb doesn't really apply anymore. But the old rule of thumb is that home field gets you three points. So they're saying neutral field lines would be slightly favored, but it really doesn't matter. But bottom line, U.S. Bank Stadium better be loud and proud and getting after things because, I mean, the Lions, they've lived a charm life so far, right? And they're overrated, they're overhyped, and I cannot wait until Flores and company just humbles them, right? Because now, right now, everyone's like, Oh, the NFC North. Oh, it's the, it's the best division in football. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's the best division because we're in it. Not saying I'm just saying, and I'm not not gonna rail on this any more than we already have. But it's just so weird. Like, how can you possibly be rooting for people in your division? Like, I, I would prefer if all of them were zero and six. But yeah, Schefter, the NFC North is now the first division since realignment in 2002, with all four teams having uh, at least four wins through six weeks. Well, mainly because the Bears haven't beat a winning team yet. They've had a, a pure cupcake schedule. Lions' schedule hasn't been that much better either. And the Packers, hey, congratulations for get, being able to beat the Cardinals at home. Just good job. It's awesome. Like, are, are we the only team who's played anyone so far in this damn division? Kind of seems like it. Kind of seems like it, man. Mm. Uh, but with the bye week, uh, what's great is when uh, players go back to their alma maters, stand on the sidelines. Uh, it's good when they sync up with home games. So Justin friggin' Jefferson on the sidelines uh, with LSU royalty, Shaquille O'Neal. That's right. Where, all right, so he's not even the best Shaq that Justin Jefferson knows. So like Shaq Griffin's up here. I mean, Shaq Diesel down here, the big Shaqtus, the big Aristotle. All right, but those are some big-ass rings. Hopefully Jefferson can get himself some big ass rings uh, coming up very very soon. Also, I just love Joseph Ring Jefferson. He seems like he has so much fun. Odell Beckham Jr. was there too, but no one cares. Do you know that Odell was on the Dolphins? No one knows that. He's not going to help things, anyways. Uh, also, slinging Sam Darnold, aka America's quarterback, oh, Tyrone Chase is just scored again. Uh, led led uh, his USC Trojans out of the tunnel, and then they lost to Penn State. Sort of give it away, give it away, give it away. Now USC is at the bottom of the Big Ten. Which is weird to say, anyways. But yeah, Darnold out there with another handsome ginger. You may recognize the gentleman on the right as Cameron Smith, a former Vikings linebacker, fifth rounder out of USC. Played some good special teams, but 
uh, yeah, had to have open heart surgery and he retired and hoping that he's thriving and living his best life because I mean, Cam Smith, like he, he was a tough son of a son of a gun and he was really good on special teams. I think that he could have developed and grown and shown into a little something, something. And, you know, it's a for, well, uh, on one hand, it, it sucks as career is over, but on the other hand, yeah, having these, you know, these physicals and these checkups, uh, I think it was caught during the Rony year where, I mean, if they didn't catch that, it could have been an issue, right? So on one hand, it's a blessing. On the other hand, it's really unfortunate that the you know, career got curtailed, but you know, hopefully he's uh, living and thriving uh, whatever uh, endeavor he's uh, currently in. Uh, sticking in a college football, so looking forward to the draft. Now, I'm firmly in the camp of F them picks because, yeah, the Vikings are bereft of picks next year. They'll get a third-round comp pick, whatever. But, I mean, that first rounder that Kwesi saved from the draft, I respect it. But now the Vikings have a legitimate chance to run this thing up and win a Super Bowl. Let's just call it what it is. You know, the Vikings are Super Bowl contenders right now. And also, you shouldn't be afraid to say that. Like, I understand the whole one week at a time thing, but the reality is what it is. And in the NFC, the Vikings are a legitimate Super Bowl contender right now. Like, who in the NFC do, do you fear? And don't say the Lions. Don't worry about it, right? Uh, and also, ooh, here's what's really great, too. Zoom in and enhance. Zoom in and enhance. So, the Vikings get the Lions at home week seven. U.S. Bank Stadium going to be loud and proud to bring that up. And if the Vikings continue crushing and the Lions get exposed as frowards, which they're going to, which is going to happen in the next couple of weeks, week 18 at Detroit, all of a sudden, that may not be daunting because guess what? Nick Mullins may start that game because you're resting up a single Sam Darnold and the starters, and uh, you got the one seed sewed up. You secured the division around week 15, and you're good to go. We'll take that. Hmm. Anyways, but yeah, so I, I'm firmly in F the first round pick, trade it for, use it as part of a trade that brings you the missing piece. Like, can we trade for Trey Smith at the deadline? <laughs> Why the hell not? Or Quinnen Williams or. Um, Joe Tipman or something like that. But in terms of if the Vikings hang on to the number 32 overall pick, Ashton Genty is really nice. Now, who knows where the market is going to value Ashton Genty? Because, I mean, you, you could have a very highly drafted first-round running back like Bajon, or you could have running backs fall out of the first round altogether. It's, it's going to be really difficult, his draft evaluation. Physically, he has all the tools in the world, but then you get into, well, what about caliber of competition? Oh, what about this? What about that? What about the running back position being devalued? Blah, blah, blah. He, he's not much of a receiver. Yada, yada, yada. Don't care. Don't care. A Ashton Jenny, he's averaging almost 10 yards a carry this year. And, and also, he runs from such a don't care, like two-point stance. Well, you can barely call it a two-point stance. It's just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, but he, you know, he's 5'9", he's 215, he's built like a bowling ball. He's got smooth speed like it doesn't look like he's running that hard but he's breaking away you know, runs a, a 4 4 2 40 and he's going to be interesting like I would absolutely love him if the Vikings get him in the back end of the first round he'd be great have to learn to pass protect but you know we'll, we'll get to that point when we get there also when we get there so the Super Bowl is the most American thing out there but there, there's some thought about moving it overseas just like all of our jobs. Uh, front office sports, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell has shifted his stance on the idea of playing a Super Bowl outside the U.S., mentioning Sunday that it's a real possibility. Things change. It wouldn't surprise me at all if it happens one day. Now, I respect that Goodell has really pushed trying to grow the game internationally. Some things don't really make sense, like why have the Brazil game? Why? Right. But London would be the most likely spot if they did play a Super Bowl outside the United States, but I don't know. I don't know, like, that's something that's so, that's so quintessentially American that it kind of sucks. But basically what it means is, hey, the, the normal Super Bowl sites, Miami, Tampa, uh, Atlanta's in the mix now, New Orleans, obviously, Houston's in, in that mix, Jarra World, uh, as well as you know, Arizona, L.A., Vegas. Hey, you're going to have to up your bids up your bids every single year for the Super Bowl. That's what it comes down to, man. Or, uh, hey, remember when M Minneapolis had that one Super Bowl because we built a new stadium? We'll get another one in 30 years when we build another stadium. That's how things work. I mean, they had a Super Bowl, the Metrodome, like 1991. The the uh, Washington beat the Bills because uh, Thurman Thomas lost his helmet. Halftime show was Gloria Stefan. Don't ask me why I know that. It's ridiculous, man. But, no, Super Bowl, America, 
I mean, what's the point? What would be the point? Like, would people over in England really be hyped up for an English Super Bowl? I mean, maybe. But guess what? They're super hyped up here. But I don't know. Uh, on the other hand, you know, most of the Super Bowl crowd is super corporate anyway. Uh, like, they, they price out the average hardcore fan. So, I mean, what, what's another $1,000 or a th- couple thousand pounds across the, the – eh, whatever. Hell, if this comes down to dollars or cents, they're, they're just going to play the next Super Bowl in Dubai. Just, just sell it. Why not? Uh, speaking of money, uh, next offseason, the Vikings have around $76 million in cap space to spend. Now, yeah, a lot of their defense are on one-year deals, but we'll cross our bridge when we get there. But there, there's some Tier 1 players that are going to be out there that are certainly interesting. Uh, Javon Holland, eh, if the Vikings want to stick with three safeties and Harrison retires, who knows? Uh, Trey Smith. I would sell a kidney for Trey Smith. I, I, I would. The pride of Tennessee, uh, he fell in the draft, I think, to the sixth round because there was some concern about, um, I think, his blood clots in his lungs. But then he played, like, two great years of Tennessee healthy, right? So, I, But he's turned into a, a Tier 1 guard with the Chiefs. It, if and when he hits free agency, because I don't think they'll tag him, make him the highest paid guard in NFL history. I would I would be all for it, man. Uh, DJ Reed, D, all right, so DJ Reed and Traveris Ward... If they don't bring back Gilly or Gilmore, uh, I'm sorry, Gilly or Griffin or, or or Murph, bring them in. Especially DJ DJ Reed's a stud man. Also, the real deal with Ali McNeil, I love him. I need him. Ali McNeil or Dallas Cowboys defense attacker Osa Digizua. We, we just need that quick interior pass rush man. Bring that on. Yeah, and also yeah, Trey Smith, like we said, just pay him all the monies. Secure that offensive line, and also you don't have to move him around. He plays right guard. Right now, right now. Hmm. Uh, speaking of which, so sometimes when things don't go your way in sports, maybe there's a couple of uh, li- libations to you know, make you forget about things. It's probably not the he- healthiest thing in the world, but it happens. But uh, so alcohol.org. I don't know if I trust it, but uh, they put together a poll of which NFL fans drink the most average number of drinks on game day. The Vikings are dead last at 4.9, which... It's kind of surprising, isn't it? Number one, the the Bengals, 8.2. There's not really much to do in northern Kentucky. Also, how many of those drinks are moonshine? That's what I want to know. Uh, then you got the the Bills at, at two. You'd think that Bills Mafia would be one pretty easily, right? And then blah, 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 blah. Uh, you, you think it would be Bills and Packers, like one, two, right? And then they're pretty steep drop-off, right? But uh, you have Packers at 6.4. Or, hell, the Bears will be up there, too. How many old old styles? Come on, dog. Come on, man. Uh, but the Vikings at 4.9, that seems ridiculously low, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Because I, I feel like everyone knows a, a, a couple of family members that, you know, when things don't go right, or hell, when things go right or wrong, like football day is drank, drinking day. That's ridiculous. So I don't know what it is. Like, do the do Vikings fans just drink 40s? Because that counts as one, as opposed to uh, do wait do the do the Bengals drink those little airplane eight ounce beers? Be stupid, ridiculous, man. But hmm. I feel like they're wrong. I feel like alcohol.org is completely wrong. It happens, man. But uh, that's it. That's it. Your thoughts are thoughts. Uh, Vikings news up for this beautiful Monday. You guys are the best. You know what to do. Skull production value.